right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. We have a few more people still trickling in, but I do want to be aware of everyone's time and make sure we get through um, the presentation for today. This is the training for moderators and co-hosts at APHA's annual meeting. Uh, that includes both in-person and virtual moderators, so we have a lot to go through um, today. But this session is being recorded, um, and anything that um, that we miss that you may have missed will be post. This will be posted on um, our website probably sometimes next week. Uh, just to introduce ourselves, my name is Natalie Koo. I'm APHA's Assistant Director of Conventions. And I'm joined here today with Donna Wright, APHA's Manager of Scientific Session Development, and Marisa Silva, APHA's Meeting Manager. Um, as I mentioned, today's, record, uh, today's presentation will be recorded and posted to APHA's website. If you have questions, please use the chat feature. Marisa is going to be monitoring that and trying to answer questions as they come in. But we'll also have the um, end of this um, session time for Q&A, and if you have questions that you'd prefer to ask out loud, uh, please use the raise your hand feature, and at the end, I can turn on your ability to use the mic and ask your question that way. Some basic details about uh, being a moderator at APHA's annual meeting. You must be registered for the annual meeting to access your session. Uh, this is both for in-person and virtual. If you're a virtual moderator, you won't be able to log into the platform if you're not registered. And if you're attending in person, you won't be able to get into the convention center without a registration. Because this meeting is taking place in person in Denver, all session times are listed in Mountain Time. So when you get an email from us about your presentation um, or you're looking at your presentation in the annual meeting platform, please note that it is in Mountain Time. We are recording all sessions that take place at the annual meeting. That's both the virtual and the in-person sessions, and they'll be available on our annual meeting platform for viewing for anybody who's registered for the meeting until January 31st, 2021. So we hope you take advantage to log back into the platform um, when the meeting is over, when if you're, if you're in Denver, when you traveled home and watch some of the sessions that you may have missed. All virtual sessions are conducted live in Zoom, and all in-person sessions are scheduled at the Colorado Convention Center. Day of the meeting, um, if you are a virtual moderator, like I said, we're doing everything in Zoom. We have a tech in, uh, in um, each Zoom room. They're monitoring a few sessions at a time, but those techs will be able to answer any technical questions you have. And then if you're in person, we have a room monitor assigned to monitor every few rooms, and they will be available if you have any questions. Um, APHA has a virtual help desk and an in-person help desk. So if you're looking for help, whether it's logging in or trying to find something at the convention center, there'll be someone who will be able to answer your general questions about the annual meeting. Um, I will now turn things over to my colleague Donna Wright, who will go into the um, meet of moderating at APHA's annual meeting. So, Donna. Thank you, Natalie, and good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much for being here. Also, thank you for signing up to be a moderator. We really were struggling trying to fill the moderator positions this year. So, we really appreciate you. So, uh, your responsibilities basically is to facilitate the session and ensure the session runs smoothly. Also, to introduce the session and the presenters and ask questions of the moderators. Um, I'm sorry, of the presenters. The co hosts will manage the virtual sessions. They will manage a chat box and answer general questions. They will also send good questions to the moderator to ask of the presenters. They will also act as a backup just in case the moderator is unable to show at the last minute. Next slide. So prior to the conference, uh, you want to make sure that you email presenters in your session to confirm their attendance and also to remind them to upload their bio. Uh, remind virtual presenters if you're a virtual moderator to provide a copy of their slides um, so that they so that you can have them as a backup. And for the in-person moderators, please remind presenters to upload their slides by October the 18th and the deadline is 11.59 p.m. and that specific time. 
You also want to familiarize yourself with the annual meeting platform. If you have not taken the opportunity to log into the platform, please do so as soon as possible, just so that you don't have any login issues on the day of your presentation. Um, you want to also make sure you know your room location. So when you navigate to your session in the meeting platform, you will see the room location if you're registered for the meeting. You've also been sent a um, email and that spelled out also the date and time in your room location as well. Donna, before you go on, I see a number of people saying they can't see the slides. Let me try to stop sharing my screen and share again and hopefully the slides will come back on. Okay. We're going to also post these slides as well after the meeting sometime next week, early next week to the moderator okay. guidelines page as well. Okay. All so set. Hopefully everyone's seeing the slides now. Um, and there was a couple people asking about turning your camera off in Teams at the top to the right is where your microphone and camera are. You should be able to turn your uh, camera off there. I lost your slides. You lost the slides. Yes. Can, can everyone else see the slides? Well, hold on, I stopped sharing. Um, okay. So let's try. You see them now. Not yet. Is anyone else having trouble seeing the slides or is it just me? It could be just me. I want to make sure. OK, got them. All right, so um, you were sent an email with a link to your speaker's corner. So you want to make sure you log into the speaker's corner from there. You can access the bios for your presenters and download them for introductions during the session. And you also want to make sure that you go through the moderator guidelines and co-host guidelines to review the guidelines and make sure that you are well prepared for your session. If you don't have Zoom downloaded to your computer, please make sure you do so. Next slide, please. So for the in-person moderator on the day of your session, you want to make sure you arrive 20 minutes before the session starts. Be sure to introduce yourself to the presenters. You will start the session by introducing the session as well as the presenters. And then the presenters will present their research in the order that they are listed in the annual meeting platform. And each presenter will have 15 minutes to present. The room will be, I'm sorry, I'm still getting the lobby, view lobby on my screen, sorry. So the room will be set with an LCD projector and a screen as well as a microphone. And then the presenter's PowerPoints will be already preloaded onto the session computer. Again, we've asked them to upload their slides in advance of the meeting so that we can do that. So if you reach out to your presenters, please make sure you remind them to upload in their speaker's corner by October 18th. Next slide. So for the moderators of a virtual session, you're going to log into the annual meeting platform 20 minutes before your session starts. You want to navigate to your session and click on the Join Now button to access your Zoom session. Again, you will introduce yourself to the presenters and there will be a tech monitoring your session. So please make sure you introduce yourself to the tech person as well. You also want to make sure you rename yourself. So you want to put moderator in front of your name. So it would be moderator and then your first and last name. And you will start the session by introducing the session as well as the presenters. And again, the presenters will go in order that they are listed in the annual meeting platform. Each presenter will have 15 minutes to present. Next slide. So there will be 15 minutes for Q&A at the end of the session. And for the virtual sessions, you will utilize the Zoom chat feature. Or you can encourage in more interaction with attendees and have them turn on their screens and their microphones. Uh, the co-host, your role will be to manage the chat and answer and direct any questions to the presenters. 
you want to be sure to repeat the questions from the audience so that those with the hearings with hearing issues and so that the recording does capture the questions. Now, after the session, you will be able to continue to network through the online platform as well as in, per in person. We have a number of networking and engagement opportunities for you, as well as participate and attend other sessions. Your session will be recorded and all the recordings for all sessions will be available three days after the annual meeting. And we will be leaving the recordings up until the end of January of 2022. For those who are attending in person, I wanted to go through APHA's COVID protocols. So all in-person annual meeting attendees must be fully vaccinated to participate in APHA's annual meeting. Full vaccination is defined as two shots of the Pfizer or Moderna COVID vaccine, one shot of the Johnson Johnson product, or an equivalent of an international vaccination. Uh, you should have received an email, uh, I believe earlier this week, with instructions on how to show proof of vaccination on site. Um, you can either bring your vaccination, your, your CDC card or equivalent, along with an ID, or you can download the Clear app. There's instructions in the email we sent, um, but you use the Clear app to upload your verification. That way you don't need to travel with your actual verification card, um, though we will take a copy of your verification as well. Facial masks are required for all indoor activities at the annual meeting. So if you're participating in something, the annual meeting that's offsite at the convention center, we do ask that you continue to wear your mask. Um, so you can take your mask off when you are at the podium and presenting. We just ask that you put your mask um, on, take, I'm sorry, leave your mask on as you're walking to the podium and put it back on when you leave the podium. And if you're doing any Q&A and sitting right next to anybody, please leave your mask on. So what to do if, uh, if you are moderating a session and a presenter doesn't show, you simply skip that presenter. Um, you would go continue in the order that things are listed in the program. Um, should have added here, if you're a co-host and your moderator doesn't show, yeah, as the co-host, you become the default moderator. So we do ask that you, that co-hosts understand the moderator's role, um, know who the presenters are in the session, and um, know a little bit about the session. We understand that maybe you don't have all everyone's bios, but we ask that you at least kick off the session and turn things over to the first presenter. And again, the first presenter is the order that they're listed in in our, in our annual meeting platform. If you have technology issues and you are virtual, use the chat to reach out to the tech. Um, they'll be labeled as Confex Tech number two, and they'll be able to help you with issues. If you're in person, you'll want to reach out to that room monitor that I mentioned earlier. They know how to get in touch with our team or with the AV team to help with any issues you're having. And if you know you need to cancel and can no longer be a moderator and you're on this call, please contact your program chair. They'll remove you from the session and try to fill that session. And I know we went through a lot today. Um, we are going to be sharing these slides via the presentation. Um, and all of this information is actually on our guideline pages for moderators and for co-hosts. Um, but we know you might have some additional questions. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and um, open things up for, for questions. Marisa, are you seeing anything um, that you want to start with? Um, how do we know if we're a moderator or a co-host? You should have received an email that spelled out specifically what your role is. Um, if you did not receive an email, you should probably check your spam or um, it would have come from presenters at APHA.org. Um, or you can reach out to me and I can confirm it for you. Just email Donna, D-O-N-N-A -N -N dot right, W-R-I-G-H-T at APHA.org. And both um, co-hosts and moderators do need to be registered for the annual meeting. The only way you can access the annual meeting platform is to have a registration ID number. You log in with your registration ID number and your email address, and that's how you access the virtual sessions. And so co-hosts need to be registered as well. 
and co-hosts are only for virtual presentations we should share just because there's a little bit more um, involved with the technology and using the zoom chat for in-person sessions it's just the moderator what else do you have oh sorry i got kicked out for a second um Yeah, if you're, um, I'm seeing a question from, I think it's Rebecca, should the sessions we are assigned to co-hosts appear in our APHA user portal under your roles? Yes, they should be there. Um, we can check and find out, maybe it's not pushing it through for your portal for some reason, we can find out, um, but they, they should be there. If, though if you know you're a co-host and you're not seeing it, you are still a co-host. Anything else, Louisa? Yeah, sorry, I had I lost my screen. I'm trying to scroll through all of them. Um, can the deadline for the in-person presenters to upload their presentations be extended? Yes. No, no. <laughs> unfortunately, um, what happens on the 18th for the in-person presenters who have to upload their slides? All of that information gets downloaded on the 19th, so the site will close on the 18th. And so we're recommending that if if they do miss the window to upload, they should bring it on a flash drive. We will have a speaker ready room on site for them to go to the speaker ready room. We're asking them to do that 16 hours before their session starts so they can upload it there and then the tech support staff will make sure that their slides are preloaded onto the session computer and if that window doesn't work for them they should just take it directly to the session and upload it to the computer it says for virtual sessions how do we determine which one the two volunteers as a moderator or a co-host or do we determine that ourselves? If you log into the meeting platform and navigate to your session, it will identify who the moderator and the co-host is. Virtual sessions will not be preloaded. The um, presenter will need to share their screen once in the Zoom meeting with their slides. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about how the Zoom configuration will look like? Will everyone have access to the chat? Will the speakers be pinned on the screen? Can participants unmute? We're using Zoom meeting, so um, uh, attendees and presenters can all turn on and off their camera. They can all access the chat, so it's not a Zoom webinar where, where presenters are in a different platform than attendees. Everybody is on the one me in the one meeting. Um, so for Q&A, we do encourage um, interaction if you want to, if you have a smaller group of people in a session and you as a moderator want to tell the attendees that they can turn their microphones and cameras on and have uh, ask their questions and have a dialogue, that is um, not a problem at all. We also realize that for some of the larger sessions or um, if if you are afraid of what people are going to say on camera, that you can just use the chat. But please know that people can turn their cameras on and off. I see a question about introducing presenters. Do you do that prior to them speaking or all at once at the beginning? I recommend doing all at once at the beginning. That way they can do their individual presentations and then at the end you have time for the Q&A. Um, and Natalie, someone was asking about the housekeeping slides. I do believe we're supposed to be posting those in the moderated speakers corner, correct? Yes, I'm still finalizing them and I should have them next week. Um, if you're a poster session moderator, poster sessions are different. Um, they don't have 15 minutes to present. They have six minutes to present. So we do recommend that you look at the different guidelines online for moderators. They're slightly different for whether you're in person, you're a poster, you're an oral, or you're a co-host, but it's all written out online. 
And someone's asking all moderator sessions are virtual. No, that is not true. We have sessions taking place um, in Denver at the Colorado Convention Center. So make sure when you're looking at your acceptance to be a moderator that you know whether you're expected to be virtual or in person. And it's asking, is there a place in the Colorado Convention Center where I can co-host the virtual session? And that's a great question. If you are attending in Denver but doing something virtually, we will have a place available for you to moderate, co-host, or present. Um, but we recommend if you have the time to go back to your hotel room to do the presentation from your hotel room. For two reasons, uh, you're not competing to share Wi-Fi with 3,000 people all at once in, a, in, in one contained space, um, and also because it's going to be a quieter environment. So the room we have available is going to be one just big room, um, and depending on where you're sitting, you might have somebody walking behind you. So if you can make it back to your hotel room, most of the hotels um, are, re are really close in Denver. They're all walking distance for sure. If you can go back to your hotel room, we recommend that. Let's see, so there's a question. Do we need to repeat the audience's questions for attending in person? Yes, if you're moderating in person, we still ask that you re repeat the question. Um, that's really important for accessibility. So for the recordings, those who maybe can't hear very well, for you to repeat it and use the microphone, it'll, it ensures that everybody knows what the question was that was asked. Are people asking where are the moderator guidelines? They're on the website. Yes, they're on our website. There's a section called for presenters and the moderator um, information is on there as well. Someone's asking if we could give out an email address to reach, I guess to reach us if you have questions. Um, I just want to make sure that you know we do have a presenters at APHA.org email account. It means all of the presenter emails go there. Anybody who has a question about the annual meeting goes there. And it's just the three of us that respond to that inbox. And right now we have hundreds of emails that we're trying to get get to. So I'm hoping that the moderator guidelines will give you all the answers that you need. And we do have a link to our frequently asked questions on the attendee page, I think, for attendees as well as for presenters. So check that out and maybe that can answer some of your questions. And again, we're going to be sharing these slides with you. And on that last slide, it says who to contact if you have any questions or if you cancel last minute. Um, you can also contact your program chair. There's a contact list there. If you have any specific questions about the session, they will be able to help you with that. Um, I know I said earlier that we would take questions uh, of people who raise their hands, so I'm going to go ahead and do those now. Um, let's see, so allow a microphone for Miriam Wheel. Yeah, um, I'm giving uh, you the permission to speak, but you have to un uh, unmute yourself. I did. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Hi, Donna. Um, Hi. I, um, I try, I am, um, I think moderating a an invited session and the invited people are not members, but we were given a code to register them and they three of the people have tried and they can't get in. And it, is there some way I can help them to register and um, prepare for the session? It's on Monday. The sure. Monday. Sure. Send me an email. Give me the names of the speakers, the session number, okay, and their and their contact information, and just confirm the day and whether or not it's a virtual or an in person. It and then be I will, okay, yeah. So just fill all of that out in the email, and then I will forward it to the registration uh, company to process those. Okay, thanks. I I've reached out uh, uh, to them to the registration folks, and I haven't heard back from them either. So I will I will do that. Thank you, Donna. You've been a big help. Sure. Um, Julie Zito, I've just given you access to your microphone. You just need to unmute yourself. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what I would like to know is what is the very first URL that that I should click on. 
that will take me, is that the annual meeting platform? In other words, how do I make sure everybody knows step one? <laughs> sure. Well, we've been sending emails with a link to the annual meeting platform and specific links to everyone's session. But if you log into APHA.org and click on the annual meeting tab at the top of the page, once you're on the annual meeting page to the right, there's going to be a green button that says view program. So that might be the better starting point to click on that link and that will take you directly to the meeting platform. And remember, everyone has to be reg registered in order to join their session. So they're going to have to sign in with their registration ID number and their email address. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Oliver, fi fine, only fine. I've um, given you permission to talk if you want to turn your mic on. Yes, thank you. Actually, hi, Donna. Uh, hi. Uh, I, I am going to be both co-host and moderator for the evening with session, which is regarded as a business session, I gather. And yes. one of my questions there uh, is that Mary Bassett, uh, who is our person who's going to be our evening with, how do I verify whether she is registered or not? Uh, she, you know, is very busy now. She's become the new commissioner of health for the state of New York. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I haven't been able to verify that she has a registration number. I can verify that for you if you send me an email. Okay, I will do that. Okay, uh, do you have my email um, handy? Pardon? Do you have my email address handy? I gather it's Donna Wright. No Don period between it's Donna. Don it's, it's actually Donna dot Wright. Dot Wright. Uh, okay, that's yes. what I want to know. At APHA.org. That's right. So just send me an email with her name and I will look it up for you. Very kind. Thanks so much. And cool. what if she's not registered? <laughs> I'll, we'll, we'll get her registered. That's great. Thanks so, so much. Sure. Uh, Loretta Ashbury, do you want to turn your mic on and ask your question? Loretta? Okay. Um, oh, I can't see the full name here. Suad. Suad, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Natalie, Donna, and everyone. I'm Suad. I'll be a, mod a virtual moderator for the um, one of the sessions, but big data visualization for public health. And I also uh, volunteer for another one about breastfeeding, but I only receive emails regarding the big data visualization uh, session. So my, I just want to make sure that I was not assigned to, I mean, based on the emails I received, I only received emails for one session to be the moderator and not both. So how can I confirm uh, that? Or is my confirmation not receiving the information from the breastfeeding session that I also volunteer. Yeah, that's probably the case. Um, you would have received a separate email for every role that you're moderating a session for. You okay. can always go to the meeting platform and navigate to the session to see if there's a moderator listed. So that will confirm. Thank you. Uh huh. Loretta, are you still there? You can turn your microphone on. I believe lost Loretta. Paul Freeman. Hello, uh, yes, Paul here. I've just got one question really. Um, a couple of my presenters are actually even new to Zoom and I was wondering if it's possible for me to just have a, a link to have a little practice session with them. You know, we'd only need 10, 15 minutes. Is that possible? APJ is not able to to set that up, but if you have a Zoom, you can create a free Zoom account and just set it up. It will be the same functionality. The, the, the trouble is the Zoom site says that that's an unreliable thing to do and they want you to uh, to uh, subscribe at uh, $14 a month. 
to yeah so just trying to get you to pay they're just trying to get you to pay some money to their platform but um the free we APAJ before we realized we were going to be working from home for 18 months we were just using the free zoom um, account and it worked just it just worked just fine it only allows you to present for 45 minutes but like you said you only need 10 15 so I think you would be fine to just do it that All way right. I'll try I'll try it thank yeah. you yeah thank you uh, Krista Ochoa I for some reason I couldn't put my message in the chat that I wasn't a member uh, but I am a, I'm moderating data collection and surveillance and for some reason when I go into the portal and click on it, it says I uh, don't have permission to access it, so I can't see any information about who is in there. Like, am I supposed to be able to access it at this point? Yeah, uh, email presenters at APHA.org. There must be something wrong with um, your login, it's, po it's possible your email address for our membership platform where you're logging in through and your abstract and your uh, moderator are a little different. Yeah, so just send us an email. Like Dada said, there are a lot of emails in that inbox. We're trying to get through them as quickly as we can. So it might take a couple of days to respond. Okay. That'd be the best way to reach us. Thank you. Cheryl Mathis. Hi, yes, I had a question about how you find the moderator's corner. I am able to log into the meeting platform, find the session. I still don't seem to be able to find sort of either the speaker's corner or the moderator information. Sure, so <clears throat> excuse me, the, the meeting platform is totally separate from your speaker's corner. Did you receive, do you still have the email that um, talked about this training today? Yes. Okay, in that email, there should have been a direct link to your session, to your speaker's corner. Oh, okay, thank you so much. Um, I must have missed that, I appreciate it. Sure. Uh, C.N. Davis. Wanna unmute yourself? Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't submit this in writing, but had no access to chat. Um, mm -hmm. The roundtable session guidelines accessed through the links that you provided very kindly um, have substantially different instructions for moderators for live virtual sessions than those that were given today. I wondered if you might be updating that site to avoid confusion because I know that a couple of weeks from now we'll all be scratching our heads otherwise. <laughs> That is a really good point. We didn't include roundtable information on here. Yeah, roundtable moderators are much different than uh, oral session moderators. And I'm sorry, I forgot to include that in the, the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, what's on the guideline page is how you will actually be doing the moderating for that. So for those who are roundtable moderators, um, roundtable sessions are a little different. There's 10 presenters and each presenter will go into a Zoom breakout room in order to do their presentation. So your role as a moderator is to kick off the session, introduce the um, introduce the panelists, so the presenters, I should say. And um, once everyone's introduced, you'll let the tech know that you can move everyone to the, that the breakout rooms can open. And then the tech manages all of that. So there's nothing for you to do as the moderator act to actually uh, take charge of the uh, of the breakout rooms and then there's a set limit of time for the breakouts everyone comes back to the main room and once everyone's back at the main room we open the breakouts again and people move themselves to the breakouts so we just ask you as the moderator to stay in the main room the whole time in case people have questions um, and or the tech needs to ask you anything now i i have had good luck sharing screens in the main room and no luck sharing screens in the breakout rooms and i am really uncomfortable having no ability to do a technical check before it's time for our session are, are you presenting or are you just moderating moderating but i don't want to embarrass anyone either you know well once the presenter moves themselves to their breakout room it's on them to share their screen in that breakout room with their slides so you as the moderator will not have to do any of that. You're just kind of like, you know, just standing by in the, the main room. And then all the Q&A happens in those individual breakout rooms as well after the presenter gives their presentation. 
OK, so we're introducing everyone all at once, and then it's up to them to say a word about themselves once they get back there. That's right. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, Marisa, is there anything coming through in the chat that we should talk about? And I'm sorry, I don't know why some people can't access the chat. I can't access the chat, and this is my meeting. I, can't. I don't know I, why. Yeah, I was able to. I can't respond anymore for some reason. Yeah, um, sorry. I've been trying to turn. I tried to change the setting. I don't think it did anything. Um, so, Marisa, is there anything coming through that um, we see. should talk about? Um, I see a question here. My session has me listed as a co-host, but no moderator is listed. Uh, it's possible that the moderator was assigned and they have since backed out. Um, if you don't see a moderator listed, I know some of the program planners are still trying to fill that role, but it's possible that there won't be a moderator for your session. And so that's one of the reasons we have co-hosts for the virtual is to sort of act as a backup, um, which means you kind of by default become the moderator. So look at the guidelines because it does discuss that. Somebody's asking, how do you contact the co-hosts or speakers? I don't see contact information in the conference platform. So if you're a moderator and you need to contact your co-host, in the email for the moderators, there is a section that talks about how you contact the presenters and the co-host. Once you log into your speaker's corner, and again, a link was in that email that takes you directly to your speaker's corner, when you log in, I think it's below the bio section. There is a link to your session. When you click on a session, that will bring up all the presenters in that session as well as the co-host. When you click on the name of the presenters, it will hyperlink to an email address. So you would just capture the email addresses and then you would have to send it through your regular email, whatever message you want to share. Um, There's also a way to connect on the platform with attendees. If you go to the attendee list, it doesn't show the email directly, but you can send them a message and they can accept that so they can exchange emails that way. They mm -hmm. can, though attendees have to opt in to be on the attendee oh, list. Right. You might not see everybody there. Um, I'm going to answer a couple more questions from the chat and then go back to people with their hand raised. Um, someone's asking, is there, or Sarah, Sarah's asking, is there any way to provide a direct Zoom link to the session presenters for easy access? No, um, we have too many pre presenters, too many sessions to be able to share the Zoom links in advance. Um, you have to navigate through the virtual meeting platform or the annual meeting platform in order to get to that Zoom link. Um, and it is available 20 minutes early, so there is that time to practice. I think, Rose, you were asking, is there a way to practice before the 20 minutes? Um, if you want to get people together ahead of time, you would need to set that up. But if you want to practice within that 20 minutes, you could do a quick run through. I just will note that present uh, other attendees, not just presenters and moderators, can join 20 minutes early. Anyone can join 20 minutes early. And um, Leslie Parks is asking if we can review the presentation upload process for virtual. Um, so it depends on your session type, if it's poster sessions. Um, they have to upload a pre-recorded presentation that's due on Tuesday. And we have shared that with them. We did a training with them earlier this week. Um, if it's an oral session and it's virtual, there's nothing for them to upload ahead of time. Um, I'm going to go back to, let's see, um, Samuel Baxter, you are next. If you want to turn on your mic and go ahead and ask your question. Daniel, you have to make sure you um, unmute yourself. Maybe we lost Samuel. Rachel Nolan. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. So I um, am a co-host for a virtual oral that lasts from 4 to 5.30 p.m. And I understand like my responsibilities as a co-host are to, you know, serve as a backup uh, for the moderator. I've already reached out to the moderator and all that. What my question is, is in the guidelines, it says that in the event that my moderator doesn't show that I am to kind of put up the housekeeping um, slide. 
and I am in my speaker's corner and I am not finding those speak those housekeeping slides anywhere. Where are the housekeeping slides? That's on me. I realize I haven't uploaded them, so I will have those available okay. next week. Sorry about that. That's OK. I'm glad that you just said that. And my last question is um, so uh, as a virtual oral again, I just want to confirm there are no slides for this presentation. Whoever the, the person that will be presenting their oral has their own slides and they will be in charge of presenting them orally. Correct? That's correct. That's correct. Wonderful. OK, because I've been getting lost in translation. So thank you so much for that clarification. I feel so much more confident. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Hi, Samuel? This is Samuel. Yeah, sorry. Um, don't know what the settings are doing today. So I had a question specifically about how do we I think someone's already asked it, um, but how do we get the email addresses for at least our other co moderator? Um, I'm in the speaker's corner. But I'm I'm not seeing that information. I've used the link, but I don't think I'm seeing. Can you all just maybe walk us through that part? So did you did you click on the link to your session title? I clicked on the link that said speakers corner and I clicked on the link that says guidelines for moderators. So I clicked on both of those links. Which one are you okay. talking about? The speaker's corner. Okay, I'm there. Donna, I'm, are co-hosts listed in the speaker's corner or is it just the presenters? No, they're listed in the, okay. yeah, they, they have their own speaker's corner too. Co-hosted. We created one for them as well. Oh so, no, sorry. Ken, uh, did we add the role of co-hosts to the moderator's corner so they can email each other? No. Okay. Can you try and pull it up so we can take a look? Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Really so I see speakers corner and then I see sessions. Should I click on my session that I, I see specifically? Okay, I, I guess I need to see what you're actually looking at. So are you in the email that has a link to the speakers corner? I, I clicked on that link, that hyperlink. And where did it take you? Does it say speakers corner at the top of the page? It says APHA annual meeting speakers corner. Okay. And, and then it says print short bios. Okay. And then under that I have a session. Okay, click on that session. Okay. And tell me what you see. I see uh, um, Presenter biographies. I see my name and I see the other moderator's name. I'm going to click on that moderator's name. Right. It's a hyperlink. And now I'm able to, to open the email. I got it now. So that's okay. the steps that we need to take that's for right. that. Yes. Speaker's yes. Corner, right. click on your session, and then it'll have, you'll click on those people's names to get their emails. You got it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, next question uh, is Jennifer. Just, uh, there's no last name, but you can unmute yourself, Jennifer. Or um, Evelyn. How about um, Alexis Grimes Trotter? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. Um, I had a question. I am moderating a Zoom um, poster session, and it says that it is live, but the session date that was provided in the original email is October the 21st, which is before the conference actually starts. So that, is <laughs> that is correct. We actually did that. On purpose, we scheduled the poster sessions prior to the official kickoff. So they are scheduled on Thursday and Friday, the 21st and 22nd of October. We do have a number of events that are actually happening happening that week. We wanted to make sure we gave uh, some of the virtual attendees opportunities to see some of the on-demand content that we have starting that week. 
Um, on Monday, October the 18th, we do have our short videos from the film festival that will be available for viewing on that day. We also have some um, section business meetings and social events that week as well. So yes, to clarify, the poster sessions are scheduled on the Thursday and Friday before the official kickoff of the meeting. Um, Evelyn, I just saw your message. Unfortunately, I can allow you to turn your mic on and off, but I can't unmute you. Um, at your top right, you should have the option to unmute yourself. And while Evelyn's trying to figure that out, Ivana? Hello, thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have two questions. So it, it looks like for the round table, there are two, ma two moderators, myself and somebody else, or are we to assume that the person's name underneath ours is just the co-host? Tied into that is I'm doing a round table. So are there even two moderators or a co-host for a round table? Um, it's possible that the program chair um, assigned two moderators just in case one drops out last minute, um, but it's not typical to have two for a round table session. I would assume that you're both uh, moderators because if one was to be a co-host, they would have been identified as a co-host. Okay. So if you don't if you don't mind sharing, you know that role, then okay. that's fine. Okay. And then thank you. Um, so it sounds like we don't need to contact the presenters ahead of time for the roundtable, correct? We don't need their slides or prior contact. Okay. That's right. We don't need to contact them. Thank you. Uh huh. Before I go on to the next person, Ty, I saw your message that you um, can't unmute. I have to give you permission. If you can just raise your hand, um, that'll let me know that you want to speak. And I'll go ahead and um, give you the ability to unmute. Um, Evelyn, were you able to unmute yourself? Or there was a Jennifer? Not, I'll go on to Bruce Jennings. Hey, Bruce. Oh, I think you're still muted, Bruce. Make sure you hit your unmute button. Just a minute. Um, OK, well, we're waiting for Bruce um, Steven Modell. Hi, Natalie. I'm wondering about the uh, in-person sessions. When the moderator hits the screen, my impression is that uh, their introductory slides will be up and they run through them. And then after that, uh, how do we uh, then um, bring up the slides uh, for the various uh, in-person speakers? I can answer that one. So are, are, are you doing an invited session where you have introductory slides? Um, and you have a speaker's corner to upload those slides? Well, I'm doing a standard in-person session. Um, will there will there be slides? Um, unless you created like an introductory remarks abstract and it's in the system, mm -hmm. um, there won't be a way to tie your slides to the presentations that will be uploaded on the session computer. If you bring those slides, the introductory slides, and upload them into the computer, you can go ahead and do your introductions. And then um, for the presenters, uh, because we're preloading their slides onto the computer, all they would do is see their name on the screen. All the names of the presenters will be listed on the computer screen, and they just click on their name, and that opens up their slides. Okay. So we're hoping yeah, we're hoping everybody will preload them so we already have them on the computer when they get to their session room. But as the moderator, if you want to do an introductory slide, just bring it on a flash drive and plug it into the computer. Uh, I'll consider that. I uh, thank you for telling okay. me that it's it's, it's non-standard. And then when one of the speakers completes their last slide, they X out of it, right? That's correct. That's correct. Thank you, Donna. Sure. Um, Bruce, before I let you talk, I did see a question pop up that there uh, there are two moderators in their session. Uh, if you're if there's two moderators in your session, the program writers must have felt that there was a reason for two moderators. It's a virtual session. 
I would consider one to be the virtual moderator and one to be the co-host. And you can work that out uh, amongst yourselves. Bruce? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I'm going to be a co-host in one of the virtual sessions and I think everything is fine there. I do have a question about the business session and um, I was I was under the impression that the business meeting of the ethics section was going to be an in-person and a room was assigned for it and so on. Um, but I'm wondering now if if the business sessions are have the possibility of being both in person and virtual. No, Bruce, unfortunately, we're not. We don't have the ability to do a hybrid type of a meeting where the virtual participants and the in person participants can participate in a session that's scheduled on site. Um, so it, it has to be either or. OK, um, did you schedule your business meeting for virtual or in person? Well, uh, um, the program, when I look at it, indicates in person. But when I filled out um, a questionnaire uh, for that session, uh, it also included uh, the opportunity of giving a link for virtual. Uh, and we had uh, the ethics session section would like to use a, 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 a different link than the than the APHA. Can I suggest um, that Donna and Bruce, you guys email about this so that people can ask, yeah. ask their, their moderator specific questions? Sure, that would be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I just want to make sure we get through all these. I, we only have a few more minutes left. Um, I know there's still a lot of questions. Um, Jennifer, Evelyn, are you still there? If not, I'll move on to KB. And again, if if you if you wanted to ask a question using your mic, please raise your hand so I can give you mic capability. Um, Corliss Sheep. Or Thal Langs Langson. Is it Thal or Thal? Sorry, I can't really read the small screen. You have to unmute yourself. Okay, maybe we've lost them. So we've only got about uh, five, six minutes left. And um, I'm, I'm sorry that there's some been some technology issues with Teams. I find no matter what platform you are in, it is not perfect. So thank you for dealing with us. Um, Marisa, are there any questions in the chat that we should be going over? Can you guys hear me? Oh, yes, go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's pronounced fell. It wouldn't let me unmute for a second. It says we're having problems on muting you. Okay. Well, my question is, you guys can hear me because it's you're freezing a lot. Yeah. No, I can still hear you. Okay. I thought this was a training where we're gonna have where we're gonna see slides and stuff. We did that in the beginning of the presentation about uh, it was a short presentation. OK. Another one as a moderator, as a moderator, um, would I have to do any, anything when I go to the Zoom? <laughs> yeah, I would read the moderator guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be introducing speakers. There's some uh, for, for our virtual moderators. There's housekeeping slides to share. So please check out our, if, if you missed the beginning of this presentation, it is recorded. We will be posting it on our website, um, but I really do recommend that you look at the moderator guidelines. Everything we talked about today is in the moderator guideline page, plus more. It's actually more on the guideline page than we went over today. Okay, also I have another question. I'm having a hard time signing up for the conference. I keep getting an error message whenever I try to register for it. Can you email APHA registration at spargo, S P A R G O I N C dot com? Okay, thank you. Sure. Can I call them instead, too? Uh, yes, their number is 866 871 5085. Okay, thank you. OK, 
Okay. Um, so I know there's still a lot of unanswered questions here. Um, and thank you for, for dealing with us as we've gone through as many as we can. Um, like we said earlier, the best way to reach us is presenters at APHA.org. Um, we are slowly getting through the hundreds of emails in that inbox, um, but that is a great way to reach us. But most of your questions can be answered by reading the moderator guidelines. So please read them thoroughly. Um, there's a little bit of differences for the co-hosts, roundtables, and poster moderators, and there's separate guidelines on our website for each of those. So you can see if we can get through a couple more questions in the last few minutes, and then um, unfortunately, I think our team needs to jump off for another training. Um, where, do you, where do you see the um, package? Where on the website? Sure. If you go to um, APHA.org and you click into the annual meeting section, there is a section called for presenters that includes moderator information as well. Okay, thank you. So, um, I see a question here, are moderators responsible for letting members into the meeting? No, uh, as a moderator, you don't have to worry about the technology at all. So we hire a company who has who sets up all the Zooms. They have a tech in every single room, um, they, or one tech monitoring every few uh, sessions, and they will, um, they will handle any issues. So if there's a Zoom bombing, um, they have the ability to prevent, uh, to, you know, to close the session down, to kick people out. Um, we didn't have any issues with Zoom bombing on the platform last year in any of our scientific sessions. Um, the only time Zoom bombing occurred were open platform things, um, groups that held events outside of APHAs but promoted it widely to their members. So if you are, if you're here and you're a program planner or an organizer, um, managing a business meeting, you might want to think through what your Zoom bombing um, criteria is. And, and I was in a session where it did happen and we just shut down the meeting and uh, and then sent a new link to everybody in the section. There's a couple, a few people asking about sh who shares a screen when they're giving the presentation. Is it the, the presenter? Can somebody else share yeah. the screen for them? It, it's the individual presenter will share their own screen which is why it's important that you as the moderator put the, the the word moderator in front of your first and last name and make sure your presenters in your session do the same put speaker in front of your first and last name and make sure you introduce yourself to the text staff so they know who you are if you put a moderator in front of your name and speaker in front of your name it will um, show you at the top of the screen, but yes, the individual presenter will share their individual screen with their slides. And did we already talk about what happens if you don't have a moderator or the moderator doesn't show up? We talked about it in the presenter training, um, but not here today. So if you are more than just a moderator and you're also a presenter and you're in a session that doesn't have a moderator or co-host, the first presenter should just kick off the session. We know that you won't be able to do introductions or a session description. Um, just welcome everybody to the meeting and um, get started with your presentations. Uh, virtual presenters do not need to upload in slides by the 18th. That is only for in-person presenters. Um, the recording for this will be posted on the guidelines pages. So again, it'll take me a couple days to get those up. They should be up next week. If you have specific questions about your actual session, like I see um, one from Evelyn here about changing the order of the speakers on your in your session, if you're organizing a session, email our presenters inbox. That's something that we need to that we need to do in the back end. The moderators can't make that change. Let's see, so there's a question here. Are we going to have an orientation session? Um, Maybe you're referring to our Navigate and Network that's held by our membership um, group and they are, they're actually doing one virtually and one in person as well. So if you search Navigate and Network on our virtual meeting platform, uh, you'll be able to find that session. So, all right, well, we're past time here and I know the APHA team um, has another event to run off to. 
Um, thank you all for being here. I know we uh, we may not have gotten to everyone's questions, so again, please use the uh, presenter inbox. We'll be posting this video, which has access to the slides in it. Um, and if you have any more questions, again, just um, use that presenter inbox. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you all. Good, good afternoon.